what are some of the things that people really should put some thought into like serious thought into when they're purchasing homes that are on let's just say more than one acre yeah so let's just say there's 80 things every buyer needs to do we're talking specifically about what do you need to do over and above or in addition to that if you're buying a home on a larger lot we'll call it an acre plus but it could be a half acre three quarters of an acre could be 60 acres um some of the things that people who've never done this before would not know to look at are uh, you're going to look at the survey a lot more. You're going to be much more, you're going to want to be or need to be much more detailed in your understanding of where your property starts and stops, what the perimeter boundary lines are. They may not be quite as clean and crisp and simple as in a neighborhood where you, you might have four straight lines. You might have some zig and some zag. You might have some water rights. You might have a creek that flows onto and off of, or you could have a pond at a boundary line. Um, you could have a true boundary line, even though you might have a neighboring fence that's been in a certain spot for 40 years, which means that may not be a true boundary line anymore. So let's just suffice it to say, you're going to want to be extra careful about, about boundary lines. Now, we just talked a minute ago about wells, septic. So I won't go into more detail on those, but you're going to want to look at that. What is my water source? Do I have city uh, water or do I have well and septic? Do I have natural gas or do I potentially have a propane tank that I lease or I own? Is it above ground? Is it below ground? How much is the storage? If I have, if I'm bringing a natural gas appliance into a home that runs off of propane, I might need an adapter. You know, so there's a lot of things to think about there. Solar is another thing that's becoming, you know, very, very, very popular on acreage properties mostly because of where they're located. Uh, you have more freedom to do some things like that. You're not as deed restricted, no, no HOA rules, things like that typically. Um, so those are all important things. And then I'll, there's a lot more. I'll throw in one more for now. Um, the kind of the, the difference in ongoing maintenance. So for example, if you're used to mowing your yard and you have a quarter acre lot and now you have a one acre lot, that's just a lot more mowing, Right. If, Four times as much. Well, it may be. There may be some concrete. There could be a pool or landscaping. You never know, but it's going to be a lot more, right? I'm just showing I can do math too. <clears throat> I appreciate that. Yep. Both of you are just on the money with basic fractions so far. So here's the thing though. Um, you might need a completely different lawnmower. If you've been paying someone to mow your yard, that part's not so proportionate. Like, you know, guy mows my yard for 30 bucks. Well, it's not going to be, you know, 120 it's a very different, you know, economics of that irrigation, lots and lots of things. But when you think about the maintenance of that, the house may be the same, you know, a, a 2000 square foot house is the same as a 2000 square foot house somewhere else. But the amount of perimeter, the amount of concrete, you might want to pressure wash or maintain that kind of thing. But usually that yard maintenance is one that people think about the work. They don't think as much about the expense as they probably should. So one of the first things you mentioned there was the, the boundaries, and that's mm -hmm. going to be put in place through the survey. Right? Yeah. Survey or sometimes depending on how much land you have, maybe even like having to be replatted, which is like a bigger, more detail oriented thing than a survey.